This is a little experiment that I haven't done before, but I thought it might be quite useful because various players have talked on the forums about whether this is just a storytelling game or whether there really is any um, real board game strategy in it. So I thought we'd look purely at the board game mechanics of it without telling any stories and see how well all this card play sort of hangs together. Now I have no idea how this will go because I've never tried playing it without telling a story before. But we've set up for a four player game. So we have um, three characters here controlled by one player, three controlled by one player here, three here and three here. So that's six characters on each side. So six spring characters, six winter characters. And each set of characters has an objective. So uh, here's an objective here, um, and there's an objective up here. So they've each got an objective which they may wish to complete because we're using every module in this to make it as strategic as possible. So um, all the spring characters have been placed onto locations at the start of the game and all the winter characters have been placed in between locations. We've placed two quests on the board. One is here, um, which is a quest for that space. Um, we don't really know, need to know what it is because that's about the story. But this quest over here is armed retaliation, which means that the winter characters want to take down the Tin Man. Um, so that's placed underneath him and we'll move around with the Tin Man. The first player to start is um, this player over here with three characters which are Grumpy, the Tin Man and Alice. So on his turn he takes his three characters and he can choose if he would like to activate one of them. So let's activate Grumpy. So when I activate him I turn him over uh, and I immediately draw three cards, which I add to my original hand of four cards. Um, so only three cards. There we go. I add to my original hand of four cards for that player. Now these are con to control all three of those characters, not just for one of them. So Grumpy, the dwarf, now has a choice of either taking part in this quest or creating a new quest which he places somewhere else on the board. He can also move if he wants to, but I don't see why he would do that. So what he's going to do initially is take part in this quest. So he's going to declare that to the other players. The player to his left now has a chance, if he would like, to get involved in that. And he can activate one of his characters, if he would like, to get involved and try and prevent Grumpy from completing that quest. His character, closest characters, are Candlewick and the White Rabbit. So let's bring Candlewick into play. So Candlewick becomes activated. And when he's activated, the player gains three cards, um, which he puts into his Hand. These are exactly the same cards as the other player has, they're just a different colour because he's using them for um, the winter side, but they're just reversible. Uh, so he now has seven cards. He's going to spend one of those cards, so he's going to discard one in order to move up to two spaces. But he's only going to move one space into there, that costs him one card, and now he's on a space where he can get involved in that quest. We then move around to the next player, which is the spring player. Um, and that is these cards here. Um, it just occurs to me that Grumpy there had an opportunity, if he wished, to try and trap um, Candlewick. And I think he might do that. Yes, he'll definitely do that. So, when a bad guy moves onto the space with a good guy, when a winter character moves onto a space with a spring character, I mean, um, the spring character has an opportunity to try and trap that character. Now that is of benefit to the grumpy character because his side, their objective is to trap an enemy character. So he could actually complete his objective here if he's successful in doing so. This trap will only ever include the two of them, but it's going to cost both of them some cards. So the first thing that Grumpy does is he takes his card and he takes his story cards and he decides how serious this trap is going to be. How So he can bid as many cards as he likes basically on this, but he does it secretly. So I think he's going to put three cards secretly and he's going to place them underneath 
his card so that the other player doesn't know where, how many he's put. Now, uh, Candlewick realises that he's walked into a trap, but he doesn't know, you know how, how serious this trap is. So what he's going to do is play an amount of cards to try and beat that total. Um, but he thinks maybe Grumpy's bluffing because Grumpy wants to um, complete that quest. So he's only going to play, he's going to bid two cards. Now, Grumpy's cards are revealed and he has spent three cards. Whereas the winter player has only spent two, which means that the trap comes off. He's successful in trapping Candlewick. These cards are all discarded. And uh, Candlewick is trapped. It occurs to me that I missed one slight element to that, which is that when Grumpy first announces that he's going to um, set a trap, he plays a card automatically, um, which does not count towards the whole total. So Grumpy will also have to discard one, one further card um, from his hand here. So we'll do that now. Okay, when Candlewick is incapacitated, what happens is that he's laid down on this space. And that means that Grumpy has completed his objective. So Grumpy has completed this objective, and that gets placed on one of these spaces on the board here. And once five of them are done, then we, then we go on to the epilogue. So that is a step towards completion of the game. And it's, it's, it's countered that interruption from Candlewick. So now we move around to the next player, which is the spring players over here, to see whether they want to get into this space to get involved with this quest that Grumpy's still trying to do. So we have Pinocchio, the little match girl, and Dorothy. Well, the little match girl could get there, but she's going to have to go through the white rabbit, which means the white rabbit could, could battle with her, which is going to cost her card. So it's probably not worth her while actually trying it. Um, Pinocchio is miles away over here. Uh, Dorothy's not close either. So I think Grumpy's on his own. So these characters aren't going to activate and that means that they're, they're going to still have plenty of cards available when it comes around to their turn. But let's come around to the next, uh, the, the other winter player and see who he's got available. So he's got the Mad Hatter, Mangia Fuko, and the Wolf. So here's the Mad Hatter up here, Mangia Fuko's up here, um, and the Wolf is way over there. So uh, the Mad Hatter could go one, two, three. Three. That's quite a lot of cards he's got to get rid of if he's going to get there. And whether he's realistically going to stop Grumpy on that quest by getting there, I'm not sure. But he'll, he'll give it a go. So the Mad Hatter is going to activate. So we turn over his card. And that player now draws three new cards to add to their hand. So these three cards are added, making the total up to seven. The Mad Hatter is going to have to spend one card to move one, two spaces and a second card to move to there. So it's costing him two cards to move all that way, which is quite a cost. So those two cards are discarded and that brings the Mad Hatter in to the space with Grumpy. Grumpy is now going to... Um, is now going to carry on with his quest that he's announced that he's going to do. So Grumpy now gets to play some of the cards from his hand describing how he attempts to uh, complete this quest. So he's going to play these two cards here, which leaves him with one card left in his hand, which he's going to get to play at the end. Um, so he's played his two cards, and now the Mad Hatter gets a chance to play some of his cards. Well, he's got quite a few, actually, because um, he started with four, and then he drew another three, lost two to get there, so he's down to five. So he's going to play... One, two, three, four cards. Now that means that uh, Grumpy, with his one card left, uh, is not able to equal those four cards. He's played two, uh, the winter player's played four. So he's not going to bother playing this final card, which means that the quest fails. Because there's been a negative conclusion to this quest, um, the winter player now chooses one of the cards that's been played and places it 
onto the memory track here. So he might place this quest onto here. And he's placed it on the winter side to show that that was who completed that quest. Um, and there goes the quest there. Um, as a result of the winter character stopping him from completing it, the, uh, the, the spring character does not claim the ability, which is the power which is related to this quest. Now we've looked at only a very short segment of the game, but already we have two of these memories completed on this track. And once we get up to uh, five memories, then we move on to the epilogue um, that you can see over here. Um, so we're some way through the game. Of course the game will be longer because uh, each time someone's playing cards they're going to be describing the story as it sort of happens. But you'll, you'll notice that each, each player um, has, at this stage in the game, got a different number of cards in their hand. Some have more um, because they haven't really got involved with any quests, others have fewer. And whether they've got involved with the quests or not has depended on where they're located on the board and whether they can realistically get there, or whether they want to try and hang on to cards for when they have to take on quests for themselves. There's also been several decisions made about whether um, people want to get involved with a quest, you know, take part in the quest, or whether they want to create a new quest somewhere else on the board. Um, so there's decisions to be had there. And then at the end of the game, when we get onto this epilogue stage, any remaining cards in the player's hand are going to become extremely important because they're going to play these cards and they're the remaining cards and they're going to be the things that score them points. Although any previously completed quest or objective is going to give them three points at the end of the game to add to the total number of cards they play during that epilogue. So this really is a game of managing your hand of cards, making sure that you have enough cards for that end of the game to score you points, but equally making sure the opposing team doesn't get away with too many of these memories uh, which uh, are going to create a very negative story for the good guys or, or the bad guys throughout the game. There's also elements of, you know, you can lose characters, characters can be incapacitated, it's going to be quite a cost in terms of cards to pick this character back up. Characters can even be completely removed from the game through certain powers. The bad guys can take those uh, some of the good guys out if they used um, uh, armed re retaliation, which is what they're, they're trying to use on uh, Tin Man over here. Um, with the quest that's underneath him, and various other abilities are going to kick in as well. I mean, we didn't even look at the the sort of skills that are on um, on the individual player cards. Grumpy could have taken an extra card when he activated if we'd been using this skills objective, so he would have been taking four cards, where other people will have strengths in battles, um, like the Tin Man here. He's got a symbol showing that he has an extra you know, ability during battles. Um, and others will be able to move around the board more quickly. So there are strategy elements to it. Um, I, I hope that answers the questions that some people have asked about how exactly the game mechanics work. I've talked a lot previously about the importance of focusing on the story and not focusing on, on whether you win or lose the game, and I think that's all very true. But those battles between the characters and the card play sort of takes care of itself. Um, and, and, and that brings the story to a conclusion where one side will win or lose. Um, but I don't think you need to focus on that. This strategy sits in the background and forms a backbone that the story is sort of built on and layered on top of, which makes for a rich, um, a rich story and also a satisfying game.